Hi everyone, it's Vicky. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about how to articulate your thoughts effectively. Now, I think we've all had this experience where we have an idea we're really excited about. In our head, it makes a lot of sense, but when we talk to other people, they're a bit confused. They don't get it. And we don't know why they don't get it. What's missing? right or it's the other way around of maybe a professor a, a teacher a boss who's telling us something and we know it's important and it should make sense but somehow we don't really get it um, so if that ever happens in your life and you're wondering what to do there are actually four very simple questions to ask in order to help you break down your ideas into actual actionable steps that you can integrate into the way you communicate. So we'll talk about that today. If you're interested, keep on watching. Now, before we actually go into the four steps, I need to address a very important misconception that keep most of us stuck. And that is we think that only when our idea is good enough, should we then communicate it? Should we then write it down? Should we then tell other people about it? But actually, it's the other way around. Having an idea, which may or may not seem clear in our head, if we start to write them out, we start to articulate it, maybe not for other people, just for ourselves, we will actually have more brain capacity to make that idea clearer. Joan Didion said, I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at what I see and what it means. Stephen King says the same thing. I write to find out what I think. So it's the other way around. We need to write it down, see it on paper, and then release that mental capacity in order for us to think, for us to make that point more articulate, make it clearer. So if you ever find that, oh, I just can't sort through this idea, it's normal. It's because you're thinking too hard. You need to put it down on paper, see it in front of you, and then break it down. Release those memory space from your brain so that it can actually have capacity to think through the problem on a deeper level. So with that in mind, how do we actually think in order to clear our thoughts and become more articulate? It's not about stream of consciousness, right? We can't just let it go everywhere. We need a structure. And the structure usually has a goal at the end. So the way we want to start is asking ourselves the question, what do we want people to do once they've heard our idea? And this is something that we usually miss, right? We don't actually think about the other person. Like, what are they going to do? It's more of just satisfying our need to share our ideas. But the ones that really communicate with someone is that those the audience understand what it means for them, what this idea, how this idea can affect their lives. So if you really want to articulate your ideas clearly, you need to know how it impacts others and what you want people to do. So in this video, I hope at the end, you will want to try to articulate one of your thoughts that you have not been able to communicate as clearly to other people. So with that goal in mind, I've thought about what's the easiest way to get someone to do something. It's giving them step-by-step -step instructions that are not complicated, that are not long. So I've honed it down to just four questions. You can ask yourself, right? It doesn't, you don't need to you know, take a course or anything. Just four simple questions, so you'll do it. And then I add misconceptions so that you remove what's blocking you from actually doing those things. You see why they're blocking you. So you're more open to trying this. With the goals defined, the next three steps are a lot easier. And I'm referencing Aristotle here in his logos, pathos, and ethos in rhetoric, which is basically just effective speaking, effective writing, or just effective communication. We'll start with the ethos, which means speaking to the credibility and trust you build between you and your audience. The question that's useful to ask here is, what do I want my audience to know about me? In order for them to understand in the first place, why are you talking about this? You can draw on your experience, your expertise, your values on why you are sharing this idea, you're sharing this topic, and it gets people to open up and I'll use Steve Jobs here as an example when he was introducing the iPhone for the first time. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along 
that changes everything. And Apple has been, well, first of all, one's very fortunate if you get to work on just one of these in your career. Apple's been very fortunate. It's been able to introduce a few of these into the world. In 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. It didn't just change Apple. It changed the whole computer industry. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. And it didn't just, it didn't just change the way we all listen to music. It changed the entire music industry. Well, today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, <laughs> and an internet communicator. An iPod, <laughs> a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. As you see, for Steve Jobs here, he is establishing Apple's credibility, building that trust with his audience, by saying that Apple is revolutionary. He repeats this again and again because he knows that that's what his audience is after. Notice that he's not saying Apple has X years in producing great electronics or X years in producing very durable products or effective products. He is focusing on the word revolutionary. The idea here is you don't have to build your credibility through just boring numbers. Like I've been in this field for 50 years and that's why you should listen to me. Instead, he's focusing on things that actually draw interest from his audience. And for his audience, right, it's people who think differently. So they are interested in things that are revolutionary. They're not interested in the best in class. They're not interested in the leader of the industry. They are interested in a different perspective, in things that change the world and turn it upside down. And so that's why Steve Jobs here used the word revolutionary and he continues to hone in on this idea. So when you ask yourself the question of, what do I want people to know about me? you have to think about, okay, the goal I want people to do is an action. Now, what can they know about me in order to be open and receptive to this idea? Comment down below and let me know. Do titles make you feel like, yes, I can trust them these days? Now, the next element I want to talk about is logos, speaking to logic and reason. And I think this is one where most of us are very familiar with. This is what school teaches us, right? You need the facts and figures, you need the statistics, you need to put in the examples, you need to walk people through the process in order for people to understand what you're saying. But there's actually more than meets the eye with logos. 
The question you actually want to ask here is what do I want people to know? Not that what do I know and just regurgitate everything you know. That's why most of the time things are really boring and we find it hard to concentrate because it's just like a dribble of all the facts and we don't know how everything connects together. Right? So it's what do I want people to know in order for them to take that action again, right? It's always connecting back to that goal. And I'll show you how Steve Jobs does it in a moment. But first, I also want to introduce the third element, which is pathos. And the way to think about pathos, which is speaking to emotion, is that it is actually linked to logos. And the question to ask is, how do I want people to feel? And this is usually what is missing in the way that we articulate that people do not understand. They might understand the, the facts and the figures, but they don't know how they're supposed to feel about it. They haven't seen the connection between these numbers, these facts, and what does that mean to me? How does that make me feel? This actually comes from the instinctive way we process information. It's the information error now. There's so much information. So our brain needs to be able to sort things into useful and not useful. And for our brain, what is useful is, does this help me survive and thrive, right? And what are those? Those are feelings of, I want to live and I want to live comfortably and happily. So that is why most of the time when we just focus on, okay, I am a established scholar and these are the things I've found, people don't understand those things because they don't know actually how, how does that actually make sense in my world? What is that supposed to make me feel? Is it going to help me survive? Is it going to help me thrive? What is the connection here? So with that in mind, let's check out Steve Jobs again. Let me talk about a category of things. The most advanced phones are called smartphones, so they say. And uh, they typically combine a phone plus some email capability, plus they say it's the internet, sort of the baby internet in the one device. And they all have these plastic little keyboards on them. Uh, and uh, the problem is that they're not so smart and they're not so easy to use. So if you kind of make a you know, business school 101 graph of the smart axis and the easy to use axis, phones, regular cell phones are kind of right there. They're not so smart and they're you know, not so easy to use. Um, but smartphones are definitely a little smarter, but they actually are harder to use. They're really complicated. Just for the basic stuff, people have a hard time figuring out how to use them. Well, we don't want to do either one of these things. What we want to do is make a leapfrog product that is way smarter than any mobile device has ever been and super easy to use. This is what iPhone is. Okay? So we're going to reinvent the phone. Now, software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're going to show you a software breakthrough, software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now, how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. Now, why, why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security and to write apps. It's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want, and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking. Notice how he doesn't mention every single thing that is great about the iPhone compared to all of the other competitors out there because there are many, right? But he picks and chooses the one that's going to make an impact and is going to emotionally connect with you. 
He summarizes all of those things together with just, it's smart and it's easy to use. How does that make you feel? It feels like it's not intimidating, right? It doesn't look like a Blackberry with all of those little buttons and it just looks very complicated. It's easy to use, it's smart, and it leapfrogs everything that's on the market and you're using something that's five years ahead of all of the other things that exist out there. And guess what? You like to think differently. You like the feeling of I'm using something that is so futuristic, so cool, with touchscreen, no, no weird keypads, right? How does that make you feel? You feel different in a good way. You feel special. I'm in on this new tech world, right? And that is how he gets you to buy the product, which is the goal of his whole presentation. Listing a few things that's going to demonstrate the point, connecting it with the emotional aspect of how easy it is, how cool it is, how streamlined it is, how it's gonna make me feel so special and ahead of the game, five years ahead of the game. It's a similar approach as he used when he was introducing the iPod, right? It's not that it has five gigs of memory. What does that mean, right? It means that you'll have a thousand songs in your pocket. Now that is powerful, right? I can feel it. Having all the songs I love, more songs that I could ever dream of, just in my pocket, not in a funny CD Walkman thing, if you know people know those things back in the days. So that's how you combine logos and pathos. They have to be connected. You have to make it make sense together in order to drive towards the goal of, for him, buying the iPhone, buying the iPod. With those four questions in mind, I want to end with another misconception that holds people back. And it's this idea of I need to be smart, I need to have a big vocabulary, I need to have a lot of practice in public speaking in order to articulate my thoughts properly. And that is not true. George Orwell said it himself, language is an instrument to express thoughts, not to conceal or to prevent thoughts. So this idea of using big words, sounding fancy, they actually conceal your thoughts. They are actually not directing the attention to the idea. Instead, his rules of writing is to be simple, to be concise, make the words as short as possible, and just use examples that are engaging, that translate into something that people understand. So ask yourself the four questions. What do I want people to do? What do I want people to know about me? What do I want people to know about the topic? And what do I want people to feel? Then put your thoughts through these by writing them down, seeing the connections, and you will be able to articulate your thoughts clearly and effectively. So if you found this helpful, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.